Hello everybody and welcome back to a series that was well loved last time. It is Coaster School. Now this time we're doing a more advanced type coaster school and we are building more advanced coasters and more coasters in the same amount of time. So in this series, this is a more advanced series of coaster school. So if you haven't seen coaster school, I would recommend seeing that. I will leave a link to the playlist in the description so you can go ahead and watch all those videos that's breaking step by step down into the basics but now I'm going to be spreading it out spreading out more realistic coasters and trying to fit more things in so you get more inspiration and I know how to build certain supports for rides and certain layouts and how things work with all of that so behind this billboard here um, I have the list of coasters that we're going to do I'm going to do a B&M gig out which I'm going to be starting today um, a CCI wooden coaster a b &M invert, an RMC, probably a, um, a steel lift, and um, an aero custom looper. So that gives a variety of support types, a variety of layouts and things that they all have unique from each other. This might change, there might be a different coaster that changes, but the only one that I am 100% positive right now is that B&M Giga because we are starting it today. Now, like I said, um, this is going to be two, like shorter amount of time building these coasters. So I was thinking 10 videos, since we have five coasters, two videos, a coaster. So I'm going to spend one video working on the coaster and the next one finishing it up. And then I'll keep going from there. And hopefully I can fit all the coasters in in two episodes. If I can't, then it'll have to go to three, maybe a little bit over three. And we'll end up at like 13 or something. But that's okay. I'm aiming at around 10 to 15 videos. Anywhere around there should be good. Uh, but if you guys ha want any other coasters shown here... Uh, please do let me know. I could continue this series. It just probably won't be a regular thing that I'll do all the time, like the part that was organized that I was supposed to be doing. Okay, so anyway, let's get started with our um, B&M Giga here. So I picked some colors for this Giga. I'm doing some white supports, and I'm doing this teal track. And then here are my materials. I got some footers for the bottom of the supports here. I got the um, white support and I got the blue support for the spine that's going up the track. And then I got over here a blue orb and a white light orb. Here are the stats on the light orbs if you want to see any of those. I just made them a little more powerful so they lasted a bit longer on the coaster and you didn't have to place as many. So a little bit example of what we're going to be building here is that over there that was conveniently there. Um, <laughs> I built that for someone a couple days ago, um, but that's something that we're going to be doing a little bit like that. Um, and hopefully, if all goes planned, we will fit all of the coasters that we need right here in this plot of land. All of our five coasters. If not, then I'll make another plot, but it really just depends what's going to happen. And I'm going to try to keep it as normal as possible. So, for this Giga Coaster, we are doing a little bit of a station, making sure we have the new utilized seven row cars. So, we have seven cars. I'm just going to do a little bit of a basic turn out of the station here into a little break. So um, normally with any B&M coasters, they always seem to have brakes or drive tires in some cases before their lift hill so that they can control the speed while going into the lift hill. So you want, always wanna make sure no matter what, you always have a brake before you leave into your B&M lift hills. So with this, you want to go at a decent, it really depends um, how steep. Normally you go somewhere around a 35 to 45 radius. Um, it's a little bit difficult to sometimes get the perfect angle when you're trying to first structure this because it's hard to tell how it's, like steep it's going to go once you put that piece in. I think this, actually, that maybe that is a little bit not. There we go. I think this is a good height. So we're going to go up with here, maybe at around this. This looks to be a good 300 feet. So we're going to crust the top. And this is the hardest part because most of the time when people get these types of coasters wrong, it's because of the shaping on the drop. So what you're trying to do when you resemble B any sort of B&M coasters, whether it's a Hyper or a Giga or anything along those lines, you always want to think of an egg. Now this may sound really strange, but trust me, it's going to help you out because B&M coasters have the weirdest shaping and quote me on that because they really do and it's so weird. Um, Another thing that when you do is when you build your lift hills, try to keep them away from any border by at least a couple blocks so you have enough room for your supports to come down on either side. Um, so we're starting the shaping, we're in a ni nice little tight crest at the top here, and we're going to slowly start inclining 
just very slowly start to go down and then we'll reach our max point which is probably going to be right here and immediately from this point you don't go straight you don't go down any farther you have to come this way whether it's a tiny bit or all the way you have to come that way once you build your final point so you're going to work your way down try to get a nice like shallow angle you don't want to have it just go straight down and then a super little tight curve at the bottom that's going to be extremely rough and not work out very well so we have this here i'm just going to snap this to grid to make it a little bit easier if it there we go so now i'm just going to click over here and look at this drop if i think it's good which i do in this case surprisingly it normally takes me a couple of tries um i think that's actually pretty good right there that looks like a pretty good giga coaster drop it's not the steepest but it, it's pretty good um so the next thing we're going to be doing is doing the spine so giga coasters like this one have a familiar spine that comes down and it makes their lift hills look extremely thick so what we're going to do with this is we're going to place our single rail down here and we're going to try and trace up this lift hill we're just going to try and trace it that's all we're doing is we're tracing the exact lift hill trying to get it so it's like halfway or all the way up to the top of this spine here because we and try not to wiggle it it's okay if you do a little bit because i know it's going to be difficult to keep it perfectly lined up um but just try your best to get it perfectly lined up so that it doesn't rise too high in the track that may be a little high itself but that's okay i'll just leave it and you're going to build all the way up to the top and this is, the, this is one of the difficult parts. So you're gonna try and mess with the height and stuff until you get it perfectly to line up. It's not too bad once you get the hang of it. Um, you just gotta get familiar with the heights and it's going to take a little while. So everything in this game requires patience and creativity and all of that. You need to make sure you have, you wanna be dedicated to what you're doing. See right here, it's kind of comes easy to me. It's not always the easiest thing to do, but it's possible with enough effort. So I'm going to just build this track down right here. And then right when it comes to that point, like I said earlier when making the drop, there's that point in the drop where it starts curving forward. When you're doing this, you're not going to curve this forward. See how this splits off from here? You're just going to build straight to the ground like that. You're just going to literally just build straight to the ground after that point where it curves. And if you want to fix any parts in this lift of your Giga, then go ahead fix any of the little parts that maybe pop out too much or too wiggly or anything like that and now what we're going to do is we're going to delete this part here now with the new feature in this game that you can delete and build stuff backwards it's extremely helpful for these type of coasters so you can just go ahead and build this all the way down and you're just going to go straight down to the ground like this and you're just going to go straight into the ground. And once again, to make this, you do need your disabled collisions pass. If you don't, it'll probably be extremely difficult, if possible at all. So we have our little spine. Do not do not worry about these default supports that keep spawning in. Get rid of them at the end. So we have our spine that goes up and traces our entire drop, comes down and splits off at our turning point where the drop starts curving out. And that looks pretty good to me so far. So we're going to be starting our supports Actually, before we do that, we're going to be placing our footers. So, um, there is many different types of footers. You can do footers like this with two of that, or you can just do footers with placing one of these. Um, any way is possible, but as you can see, sometimes when you do this, they don't always line up right. So, if it's ever in the middle, you just use these guys and then place one here, one there, and it perfectly links up just like that. So, that's what I'm going to do for these parts because they perfectly actually accept that. Really good. So now you have some nice concrete footers to give the footer, give the support a nice base at the bottom. So we're going to be starting our white supports. Now you need to pick where your supports are going to go in your drop. So I think I'm going to have a support right here, a support right there. It's, it's a little bit difficult. I'm going to do one here. And once again, it takes some trial and error. If you don't think it's in the right position, fix it. You know, it doesn't hurt to fix it. So I think we're going to have one come down right there and then one come down right there because this one's going to come and curve this one's going to curve also and then this one is going to come down right because this should come off of here and it's going to come right there so 
So I think that's a general location of where our supports are going to go. Once again, you don't have to plan this out if you don't want to. You can just go with the fly and see what happens. Um, that's normally what I do sometimes, but for the sake of you guys watching and wanting to know how to do this, I'm going to show it that way. So I'm going to start with the support and I'm going to go up from the part I had and rest it on the track like this. I'm going to go two back. So it should be one space away from the lift hill here. And I'm going to go one or two up, depending on what you need. I'm just going to do one in this scenario. Uh, so as you can see, I'm just going to curve this down just a little bit like that. And I'm, this is, once again, all trial and error. You're going to try and get it to line up perfectly, just like that. And you see that once you have your support here, you're just going to delete, um, double click, double right click, actually, on this support. And you're just going to delete this part. And you have one beam. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go right on the track. You're going to go back two, up one, or two, whatever you're feeling, and whatever's easier, depending on where the track is. And you're going to build just like that. And if and you want to make sure that you have, uh, I'm just going to call it an axis of symmetry in this case, because it's kind of relating to math in certain kinds of ways. So as you can see, if I put a line right here, this would split it and it would be symmetrical on either side. That's what you want in this. You don't want it to be one side that goes straight down, one side that goes curved. You want it to all be perfectly symmetrical on this. And you should get something that looks like maybe an upside down V, like that. And that's your first support, so you can go ahead and delete this. And you can go ahead and place your footers, just like that. And that's your first support for your Giga. You built your first support, how do you feel? So now what we're going to do is we're going to place this one, two back, and in this case we're going to go two up this time to make it a little bit easier. We're going to build down, and we're going to make sure that we're not going too wide. We want to keep it in, we want to keep it narrow, we don't want to make it out wide like this. We don't want to have wide supports, we don't want to have them come out extremely far. We want them to be nice and close in. Not too close, like see this, that's not too close, it's a good reasonable size apart. Um, it's just kind of whatever feels best for the situation that you're in. So I'm just going to build down here. And that's a pretty good size, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this when I like it. Just like that. I'm going to build this back to, up to. I'm going to build down. And once again, it probably looks easy for me. Oh, I need to delete this actually. Put it in the wrong spot. Back to, up to. Okay, so we're going to build this down, and once again, this is extremely difficult without disabled collisions. So I would strongly recommend that for all of this coast advanced coaster school, that you have all, if not every game pass, at least disabled collisions. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to build this down, and as you can see, that is not symmetrical at all. This one comes out way farther. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to this point, and we're just going to curve it down a tiny bit. And normally what you would do is you delete that one and come down a little bit more. But in this case, it's just a tiny bit, so it's not that necessary to redo the whole thing. So right now, we're just going to come down. That looks pretty good, so we're going to delete this part. And just like that, we have our second support. We're going to get our footers on like that. Delete this guy, and we have our second Giga support, and that looks very nice. For the third one, this is when it gets a little bit tricky. So. What we're going to do for this one is it's not going completely straight down. Now you can have it straight down if you want, but it won't be as realistic if you do it otherwise. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it one, this one come from here, go down and curve this way, and then go down here, and we're going to have this one start here and curve here. So these, these are always the most difficult, the most stressful, and the ones that people always get off the most. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the top where we want our support, we're going to go back a little bit, and we're going to curve it up, and we're just, just going to space it out a little bit and see what happens. See, this is not far enough, so I'm just going to move it a little bit back. It's trial and error. Like, wherever your track is, you just got to figure out a nice spot that you know you're going to have enough room for the following that I'm about to show you. So for this, you're just going to go like that and just curve it a tiny bit. This is actually pretty difficult. Um, just going to curve it a little bit and it's the turning that makes it slanted so you want to try and get that just like that because you want it to curve and you're just going to build and see what happens 
so that's a little bit too wide and now this once again it's all trial and error it, it's all um stressful well i wouldn't say stressful but it's all a definite trial and error and it takes a long time to master this all i've built many gigas and i've had a lot of experience with this so it may seem a lot easier than it is so i'm just going to build this other one right here curve it down a little bit i don't know if that one's right yet so that's why i'm just leaving it there for now i'm just building the other one to see how it looks when they're both there so i'm going to pull this one down and i'm going to see what happens when they both let me try and make sure they're symmetrical and you have to make sure they line up this way too because if they don't line up this way you're going to have troubles later so we're going to build all the way down you're going to make sure they line up this way this one looks a little bit wide so i'm just going to go back up here i'm going to pull it down just a tiny bit and i'm going to build down looks like it lines up here that's good looks like it lines up here that's good too so i'm going to finish this and once again don't worry about these default supports that keep spawning you'll get them at the end so i'm going to go here i'm just going to delete the two ends and now you have this support that's not quite finished yet so now i mean obviously this is this looks a tiny bit high you can always change anything that you like um, i may or may not move this down off the video um, I, I just don't want to take too much time for you guys but i'm just showing you generally how to do it so now as you can see it's a little bit off because they don't perfectly line up like that but that's okay nothing has to be perfect it gets the visually appealing check so now what we're going to do is we're going to go around this part of the support like just above halfway maybe right here and we're going to pick it right here bring it a couple blocks back and place one there so we're basically we're connecting these two at this point right here so we want to make sure they have an even bar that goes across so we have to make sure this perfectly gets through here links up with this part i want to make sure it gets to the other one just like that it's okay to have them curved just a tiny bit because it's probably not noticeable and then once we have that, we're just going to delete this part. And we have a nice spine in that little piece right there. And if you want to, it's they're not on all gigas. You can build a cross support through here. Like that. And you can build one from here to this point and have them cross down. That's on some gigas. You don't have to have it. I'm not going to build it in this video just because. Um, and yeah, that's you can have that for extra detail. So this next one, I'm just going to place it it should go around right here so i'm going to see i'm going to move two back actually three back and then one over here and i'm just going to place that other one symmetrical to it on that side so now we're going to just go and once again this is all trial and error it's pretty difficult to get i'm just kind of showing you the general way and how to do it so we're going to start building down here and we're just going to see where we get Hopefully, yes, we can line up with that footer, actually. So we're going to exit that. That looks pretty good to me. So we're just going to build this other one before we get rid of it, just to make sure, in case we want to change something. Let's get that. And let's bring this down. I can just tell that this one's not going to line up perfectly right away. Yep. Got to bring this down just a little bit. Uh, too many items here. I'm just going to... There we go. So, a weird tip that somehow works. If there's ever too many items, just make the piece really large. And then somehow it's able to, like, disobey that rule and somehow place it. I don't know how, I don't know why, but it works. <laughs> just going to build that. That's a little bit off, but I think it's okay. Actually, it's actually pretty good. There we go. So now we have that support and that looks absolutely fabulous. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these guys. Um, I'm doing this first try. This may not take you first try. This may take you very many tries. So don't get frustrated. It takes practice. Now that that lines up, we're going to do the same thing that we did with this guy here. So we're going to build this support here. Move this over just a little bit. Oh, not up. Going to go over like this going oh too many there's already something here why do my disabled questions go off anyway let's just place here curve that a tiny bit because we can and let's delete this part 
Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm just going to extend these footers this way so that it supports both of these supports. And that looks pretty good so far. Um, for our last support that we're doing, it's going to go right here. Last actual lift tail support, that is. And it's going to go right here, and it's very low. This is a very different support from the rest. It's going to come out, and it's going to go here. And it's going to curve this way. It's not going to be, it's going to be way more curved. It's probably going to be like this. So it comes down very wide. It looks different than all the others. It's going to come down like this. Just trying to stay narrow. Like that. And once again, I'm going to keep that in case this one doesn't look as good once this one comes off. Just going to build that here. Too many items here. Let's just build a big piece. Bigger piece. Even bigger piece. And somehow it works. <laughs> so that looks pretty good. That lines up good. Looks okay. Delete this part, delete that part, and let's just place some footers. I'm going to place these ones the other direction because it's coming down from there. And there we go. We're just going to go ahead and remove all of the excess things that we had from our draft and all of these default supports that decide to spawn on us. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this, and then hopefully the final product looks really nice. Got to get rid of those. Okay, there's our final product for this Giga. That looks very nice. The only thing I'm going to change, and probably will change off the video, is moving this one one down so that it doesn't look as close to the top and gives this part a little bit more support. But otherwise, I think that's a really nice Giga coaster. Um, make sure to leave what you guys think in the comment section below, and we will continue building our Giga Coaster in the next episode of Advanced Coaster School. Until then, thank you guys all for watching and enjoying this the last Coaster School series to make me want to make another one, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye!